Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Phil Switch. My name is Phil Carew, and I am joined by my fearless co-host, Brock Tamarino. The Phil Switch podcast is brought to you by Sal's Tire Caps. Sal's Tire Caps. Studies show that smart people buy Sal's Tire Caps. Don't be a moron. Buy Sal's Tire Caps. Ah, Another lovely copy from Sal. Always a nice guy. Always nice. Cares about his business, cares about the customer. Brock, I have some exciting news in regards to the Phil Switch podcast. Oh, yeah, what, uh, oh, I, yeah, 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 I know what you're gonna, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Sorry, got, uh, got distracted by Sal's, uh, Sal's ad there. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so last week we had callers call in to the Phil Switch podcast talking to us about, uh, their experiences with Flash. Uh, flash mobs we had a particular caller call in that uh, gave us a whole different type of story that gentleman was tactical tim i said on that show i wanted to have tactical tim back on the good news is right out of the gate tactical tim is in studio with us today but also tactical tim talked with our producer our producer reached out to him and tactical tim has agreed to do video segments on behalf of the Phil switch and he'll be sharing various tactical tips, uh, updating people on his tactical life. So tactical Tim's going to be with the Phil switch, uh, for a little bit here, at least. Um, I'm not sure how long we have him on contract or whatever the producer figured out with him. But anyway, tactical Tim here in the studio, tactical Tim. So glad to have you back in the, or in the studio with us and, uh, part of the Phil switch team. Yeah, guys, so um, very excited. I've already put out uh, two two videos. According to the producer, we're just going to keep them short, keep them sweet. Uh, I'm going to try to get information out there about tactics, living a tactical life, tips if I have some. Sometimes I might be just telling people how I'm doing and try to provide some tactical guidance through what I guess they call vlogs. So I'm working with your producer to do some of that and uh, really excited to be part of the Phil Switch podcast, the Phil Switch, and uh, hoping to bring some real tactical enjoyment uh, to the fellow tacticians out there and maybe the up and coming uh, tacticians out there. So yeah, and I'm just going to be hanging in the studio today, uh, maybe answering some questions about some tactics, things like that. So Really excited to be part of it. Uh, if you guys haven't got a chance, the producer told me to uh, plug the videos. So go check out those videos. You can check them out on YouTube through Comedy Cigars Music. Uh, you can also check them out on Rumble through uh, the Phil Switch. So really excited to be part of the team. Anyway, guys, um, I guess back to you or what, uh, whatever we're going to do from here. Yeah, so uh, just a, uh, sorry, just a quick thing. Um, Okay, guys, so, so tell me this. So I had to get somebody a gift not too long ago. And it's always been it, it's always been my thing, at least for the last several years, that I just get people gift cards or I, sometimes I, get, I give them money. But I'm not really a, a big uh, shopper. So I don't go out and like buy gifts. Plus, I never know what people want. Uh, and I don't like asking people, what do you want for your birthday? Cause everybody asks you that. Or what do you want for Christmas? Everybody asks you that. So I just get gift cards to a place that I think I, I'm pretty sure they like, or I just get them cash. My thought is then they can get whatever they want, whenever they want. And to be honest, some part of that is it takes the stress off me from going to stores. Anyway, I have been, uh, endlessly berated for this, uh, sorry, uh, not to use, Uh, some of your lingo there, Tim, but I've been berated for this tactic uh, to just go out and get gift cards or give cash. Do you guys run into this problem or is this just me? And I'm sorry if this is off off track. I just, I'm curious. I actually do the same thing. I I hate shopping. I get gift cards. I give cash. Uh, I've even had people, people will send me ideas for gifts, which that's such a weird thing to me. Like when you don't ask and I just give them cash or gift cards. Because I, I got to be honest, Brock, I'm probably more selfish than you in that uh, I do that mostly because I don't like shopping. Um, the, the other part of it is because I want them to get whatever they want. But I, I do that because I don't like shopping. So, uh, yeah, if I can, uh, if I can chime in here, guys, if you don't, if you don't mind, um, I, 
I kind of switch it up. Like I will, if I know the person well and I've been over to their house or I've been in their car, it's very easy for me to see what kind of tactical life they're living. So if I go in somebody's house and, and, and I think to myself, if I were to come into this house as a, as a hostile, how easy would it be to overcome this person? And if it's the easier it is for me, the more gift ideas I have for them. So like, uh, so I'll give you an example. I walked into my uncle's house the other day. Right. And my uncle's a pretty cool guy, but not the most tactical guy. Uh, in fact, when I knocked on the door, even though we had agreed to meet at this certain time, as soon as I knocked on the door, he just answered the door. Um, questionable tactics there. It's all right. He's a little bit older. So I, I look around his house. So for the past couple of years, I've gotten my uncle, oh, I got to say, I've probably gotten him 20 uh, tactical knives. I've gotten him about three or four pairs of tactical pants. I got him, I bought him a pair of tactical boots one time and he returned them. It kind of hurt a little bit. So I haven't got him tactical boots again. And I've also got him about five or six tactical hats. And uh, my uncle still has a lot of work, a lot of, a, a lot of ways to go before he's a complete tactician. Um, in the way I would like him to be. Now, I have asked him how often he's practiced with the tactical knives, and he's never really given me a straight answer. But I did see the last time I hung out with him, he had a tactical knife in his pocket, um, in his in his side front pocket. And I could see it. And I immediately tried something, so I disarmed him. I was able to grab the knife out of his pocket. Uh, I was a little disappointed in that, and he slapped me upside the head, which I wasn't ready for. Tactically, I was ready for it. But I was also running my own um, testing simulation. So the fact that he hit me, I didn't really count that. Um, in fact, when he hit me, I said, that doesn't, that doesn't discredit my tactics. I just wanted him to know that. And then I gave him his uh, tactical knife back. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I, I always, I base it off of people I know now. If I don't know them, I will typically send them some type of subscription to a tactical magazine. That's what I'll typically do. All right. See, Tim, I knew you would, I knew you'd be perfect. I knew you'd fit in here on the fill switch. Perfect. So I talked to the producer for a long time about that. And I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm happier than anybody else. Uh, I will say right now that, that, that you're with us. Um, so actually I'm getting, hold on a second. The producer says that we have a call. So real quick for the listener out there, I thought this was, um, and for actually us in the studio, just as a reminder, this was going to be, um, a Phil switch episode where it was just uh, tactical Tim Brock and I talking, but our producer decided to take a call and put them through. So uh, caller go. I, I don't even know who it is to be honest. Caller, you are on the Phil switch. Oh yeah. Hi guys. It's Debbie. How you guys doing? Oh, Hey Debbie, how are you doing? Haven't heard from you for a little bit. It, it, it was actually pretty enjoyable last time we heard from you. So what's up, Debbie? What made you uh, call the fill switch? Yeah, so I hear you guys talking about gifts. Yeah, so what I like to do, I don't know if you guys are taking callers or not. It sounds like maybe you're not taking callers. But anyway, what I like to do is when it comes time to get gifts, I, I usually I don't ask anybody anything now. And I got to the point where when it's around somebody's birthday or Christmas or something like that where you're going to give them gifts, if I get any emails or text message from people, I don't even read them. I just delete them because I don't want people to tell me what they want. No, because I, I, I like to make gifts. So I make all kinds of things. Yeah. I like, I like, like I make blankets. I make blankets a lot. Oh. Like even though it's summer, I still make blankets. I don't care. Like I like to make blankets. Oh, yeah. So I make gifts. I make blankets. I make other crafts. I don't like. I, I try to make different things every year, but sometimes I get bored. I just make the same thing for years and years. And people say like, like, like I had a friend the other, like last month. I got. I made my friend a blanket. It was like a blanket quilting. Yeah. And and I make it for my friend. And she says, Debbie, I don't only. I don't need blankets. She said, You want me to make it? You already make me like five blankets. She said, I don't need blankets no more, Debbie. And I said, Oh. You don't need any more blankets, huh? Oh. Yeah, you don't need any more blankets. I, you already have five of my blankets. And then I say, well, here's the thing. Um, you're still going to get a blanket, yeah, because that's what I'm making. 
So some people are like, oh, oh, Debbie, that's not that's not the way you give gifts. And I say, oh, well, that's the way that Debbie gives gifts. Yeah. Yeah, see, Debbie, I, you and I think would get along well because I'll have people like my uncle. He said like, he said like, Tim, I don't need, I don't need any more tactical knives. This is where, this is when he already had 15. And I said, Hey, I, I've not seen you yet carry a knife. Cause like I said, he carried a knife recently, but it, w- even when I had him with 15 knives, he still hadn't carried any knives. Like he didn't, he didn't understand. Like it's, it's, it's really hard to, it's really hard to convince somebody that they have to be in that tactical mindset. Like I, like I told you guys, I'm always in the, you know, I'm always in the zone. I'm not always in the environment or element, but I'm always in the zone. And there's so many people out there that tactically aren't always in the zone. They're not even in the environment. You know, if something would happen where they need to conduct a tactical operation, um, like take my uncle, for example, if he needed to conduct a tactical operation with a, um, edge weapon platform, uh, to the layman, that's knives. Um, he would have no idea what he's doing. He might as well be sitting there scratching his butt with the toothpick. You know what I'm saying? And so Debbie, I really, I really like the idea that you kind of have this idea for gifts in your head. And even if people don't want that gift, maybe it's just the fact that they can't really appreciate the gift yet. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense, Debbie? Yeah, no, I don't think they know they want it, but it's like with the, with the people that I make blankets. Yeah. The people they're like, I don't want the blanket. I already got enough blankets. I'm like, you, I'm like, you can never have too many blankets because these are the same people come over my house. See, I keep, it, I keep my house pretty cold. Yeah, and these are the same people that come over to my house, and then I said, Debbie, we're so cold, and and sometimes I say like, oh, where's your blanket? Oh, Debbie, make you blankets. You don't want them, but then you want to come over to Debbie's house and complain about being cold. Yeah. Oh, Debbie doesn't like that. Maybe you should bring your blanket. I said, well, how many blankets you need? And they said, well, like just a little course. I get them one blanket, yeah. And, and and maybe like about 15 minutes later, they said, Debbie, it's still cold. Can you, do the, can you turn down your air conditioner? I said, well, here's the thing. Unfortunately, this is my house. Yeah, this is my house. So I'm going to keep the air conditioner running where it's at. Yeah, because I like to be cool. And as you can see, I have the blanket, so I'm okay. And they say, well, Debbie can I have another blanket. And so I say, oh, I thought maybe one with too many blankets. I don't, I don't want you to have two blankets and then have too many blankets. No, I don't want that. Oh. And so my friend said, well, Debbie, it's so cold. And so I go get the other blanket for my friend, yeah. And now she had two blankets. And then maybe like 20 minutes later, we're watching a movie. Yeah, we had some ice cream. And she said, Debbie, you know what? I'm kind of cold. I said, oh, well, the thing is you had two blankets, right? Yeah. Yeah, you had two blankets and you're still cold. Huh. I wonder how you could get warmer. She said, well, I kind of need another blanket. And I said, oh, you remember when I was making you blankets? Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. You remember when I was making you blankets and you say, Debbie, I don't need no more blankets. But it's funny because now you want three blankets. Oh. You know, you want three blankets. But you don't want Debbie to make you any more blankets. And my friend, my friend just stared at me. I get a three blankets. Three blankets don't seem like too many now, does it? No. No, it don't seem like too many No. No, it don't seem like too many at all. Kind of like maybe Tim, your uncle said he don't need he don't need twenty knives, which I don't know what you do with twenty knives, Tim. To be honest, I don't know what you're talking about when you talk about things. I hear you on the last field switch. I don't really understand what you're talking about when you talk about operations and quadrants. But it seemed like you're really interested in it. So I understand people say they don't want stuff, then they do want stuff. Yeah. So is like this, uh. Has this become like the Debbie and Tim show? Like we we were talking to Tim, and that's all right. Actually, this is kind of entertaining for me, you know, because uh, usually it's Phil and I here talking, and we have callers call in, or um, we've had a couple of times where there's just somebody in the studio, but this is actually kind of interesting for me, being in the studio, but watching two other people, you know, just talk about stuff. So that's kind of interesting for me. I kind of get a, you know, 
I kind of get to take a break for the week. Still pays the same as far as I know. So yeah, this is kind of interesting. So what's cool here is we have Tim here, right? And he's talking about like uh, tactical knives or tactical uh, weapon platform things. And we have Debbie here and she's talking about getting gifts. All I did, I, and I brought up this topic, right? Like I brought up the topic about gifts. So that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Yeah, Brock, you did bring the topic up and that's, yeah. So it has become the Tim and Debbie show. That's for sure. And Debbie's still on the line from what I understand. And our producer has another caller for us. Um, caller, you're, I, caller, you're on the line. This is the Phil Switch podcast. I'm guessing you're talking about gifts. I don't know. Um, caller, go ahead. You're on the Phil Switch. I like wigs. Hello? Okay, and our producer is saying that that caller is gone. All right. Cool. So, Debbie, you make, so you said you make gifts for people and you said you make blankets. What other types of things? You know, it could be cool if you and Tim get together. Now, Tim, Tim, definitely chime in on this because I'm not as versed in this as you might be. What if Debbie were able to make you like, uh, I don't know, like holsters or things like that. Oh, no, no, no. I don't make holsters, no. No, holsters are made of like, they're made of, they're made of other stuff. No, I, I make, I, so I make blankets. I make doilies. I make little oven mitt things, yeah. I don't make oven mitts a lot because people say, oh, Debbie, you make the oven mitt so short when I... The, well, the problem is I try to make the oven mitt so it's kind of stylish because half, half of the oven mitts go down your forearm to your elbow. So it looks like you're trying to be like a goalie in hockey or something. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to make like these nice custom made, well, not custom made necessarily, but I kind of want to make these nice stylish type of oven mitts. Yeah. And people will tell me, Debbie, you make, the oven mitts look nice. They look nice. I said, oh, I know. I know they look nice. I saw them. And they said, but the problem is, Debbie, you, 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 you try to make them so short because you don't like how to go down to your elbows because you say you don't want to be a hockey player when you're trying to get cookies or something out of the, the, the oven. And so the problem is, Debbie, you make them real short so they don't cover the bottom of your hand. So every time I use them, Debbie, I burn the bottom of my hand. I say, oh. I'm sorry. And they say, yeah, maybe you ought to think about making them longer. I say, no, I don't think I will. No. No, because that's how, see, because that's how I make the oven mitt. Yeah. Yeah, if I wanted to make a long oven mitt, I'd make a long oven mitt, but I don't. So maybe use your fingertips a little bit more. Yeah, maybe you should use your fingertips. Oh. You know, Debbie, that's, that's the same problem I have. Like, um... Sometimes, especially if I have tactical shorts on, right? People say, "Tactical Tim, why, why, do, why are your tactical shorts so short?" And uh, because I like them about like wherever mid thigh is, bring them on up, bring them, on, bring them on up a little bit higher than that, uh, because I like to have freedom of movement, which I'm going to talk about in a uh, another tactical uh, tip lesson at some point. Freedom of movement and how your tactical clothes can help dictate that freedom of movement. But anyway, uh, that's for another place, another time. Uh, that's not the tactical operation I'm here to complete today. So people will say, why don't you have those, you know, why are those so short? And I'll say, Hey, listen, listen, if you want long shorts, if you want those like board shorts that come down to your shins, which, which aren't even really to me, aren't even shorts anymore, then you do that. Right. But, um, I'm going to stay tactical, um, not to, you know, not to steal for myself, but I'm going to stay tactical, stay practical, and I'm going to wear whatever shorts I want to complete the tactical operations I have for that day. And that tactical operation I have for that day when I'm wearing my shorts might be running. It might be leisure. It might be, um, you know, I, I, I might be clearing a, a lake I'm swimming at for hostiles. I might be over here uh, taking a bike ride, which I'll be honest, sometimes... Um, when I'm wearing those short shorts on a bike ride, I do sometimes regret it. They start kind of digging into my nuggets, but, um, I I've always, you know, I've always, I've always thought that you should, you should wear. And, and, and like you said, Debbie, you should create, 
in the way you want to create. So if you want to make oven mitts that don't cover the bottom of your palm, I, to be honest, from a tactician standpoint, I can't completely understand that, but I understand where you're coming from with your point of view on how you believe you need to complete that tactical operation of fixing or not fixing. I'm sorry, of making the oven mitts. I understand that's in your world. That's a tactical. That's what I would call a tactical operation for you. Um, and I understand why you have to do the things you do, to make those oven mitts the way you want to make those oven mitts. Do you guys, do, Phil, Brock, do you guys understand what we're saying here? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it basically sounds like, like from Debbie's point of view, she just makes stuff and doesn't really care if people like it, um, even as gifts. And from your point of view, you just, you're living that tactical life, which I love that. And you just do tactical stuff the way, and I, well, I'll, I'll finish this up, but you just do, uh, stuff the way you think it should be done tactically is that that that's kind of what you guys are saying right yeah that's yeah that's exactly what i'm saying you, and and uh, you said you had a question yeah i had a question so i saw the um the video you did about uh what was it edge weapon edge weapon platforms yes yeah i saw that video and you so you said the minimum number you should carry is 5 but you said the standard is to carry 15. So how did you settle on the number 15? Just out of curiosity, I'll be honest with you. If I ever carry a, a tactical knife on me, it's usually one. Um, so I'm, I'm way beyond, I, you know, I need to start, I, I'm excited for these videos to come out that you're going to be making. Yeah. I, I mean, with, with one, you might as well, you know, with one, you might as well be, well be just like whistling Dixie. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would, I would feel better prepared if I had, you know, three toothpicks, um, at the bottom of my pocket that I wasn't aware of. Um, so yeah, one, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're really rolling the dice with one Phil for sure. Um, so yeah, how did I settle on the number 15? I mean, you, you know, the first thing that always hits me when people ask me questions like that is experience. You know, obviously I have some experience. I, I've been in this game a long time, Phil. Okay. Um, and I don't say that braggadociously. I, I just say it because, you know, if, if, if you were an athlete, right. And you play, you play a sport for 20 years. And then somebody says, well, how did you become such a proficient athlete? You say, well, because I've been playing a long time. You know, that's not braggadocious. You've been playing a long time, 20 years, two decades. That's a long time. So I've been in this tactical game for a long time. Uh, I can't even really get into years to be honest with you at this point, but yeah. So I settled on 15 because I'll be honest with you, my magic number my magic number was 16. All right. And I, I, I can't really, I can't really explain that. I just, that was always my magic number. The number I wanted was 16 tactical knives. I always thought that was like the, that would have been like the number to go with. It just seemed like so tactical. The problem was, and I can't tell you guys where I have my, where I have all my knives because that would give up my, that'd give up my tactics, that'd give up my tactics, my element of surprise, all that stuff. Heck, one of these listeners one day might find me and be like, tactical Tim, it's me and you go time. And I don't want them to be able to like disarm me like I did my uncle. Uh, but anyway, the 16th, they never worked out because where I had to put the 16, I'll be honest with you guys, because that's not where I keep one of my tactical knives now, which I feel kind of foolish giving that secret away, but I used to have to, I was always trying to figure out how to get that 16th knife in my tactical underwear. Oh, you got tactical underwear. Why are you, why do you do a tactical, I don't even understand tactical underwear. Is that mesh? Oh, no, 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 Debbie. It's not mesh. There's, <laughs> there's no way I'm using mesh in, in, in tactical stuff. Uh, all the air getting in, all the air getting out, uh, not not very durable at all. So no, it uh, wouldn't be mesh underwear. I can't always get into the propri proprietary blends um, that tacticians use for their tactical clothing. But uh, let me just say it's durable. It's fine. Okay. Okay. So um, anyway, I... I had to put the 16th knife in my tactical underwear. The problem was, is if I, I can never find a, a good location in my tactical underwear for it, because if I placed it in one area, it would, it would dig into my, in, it would dig into my nuggets. Um, um, and if I placed it just a little further back, I, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. If I place it just a little bit further back, it would tickle my anus. So, I always had a hard time figuring out where to put that other tactical knife. 
Hold, hold on. You said it would either. <laughs> you said you said it would either dig into your nuggets or. <laughs> did you say? Did you say it would? Otherwise, if you placed it somewhere else that didn't dig into your nuggets, it would tickle your anus. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is uh, which is very distracting when you're trying to conduct a tactical operation. So I had to just abandon the 16. And so that's why, that's why I settled on 15 and then five, to be honest, I'm not crazy about five as being the minimum, but in my research and my time as a tactician, five is a pretty solid number that people will accept. That's a good number that people will accept. And that's five is about as low as I'm willing to go with, you know, edge weapon platforms where I feel safe and confident and I will put my stamp of approval on, I'll put the uh, TT stamp, tactical Tim stamp. And now I'm guessing I'm going to be putting the, the TT T, uh, TPS stamp, tactical Tim, uh, the fill switch stamp on it of approval. Because I feel like if somebody can come up to you and they can disarm you of five knives, they've got to be a ninja. And I'm actually going to talk about um, ninja and various martial arts as well in later uh, tactical Tim tips. So, uh, stay tuned for those, um, everybody listening out there, but yeah, so that's how, that's how I settled on 15. That's how I settled on 15. I just couldn't figure out a good position in the tactical underwear for knife number 16. Well, that's, um, that's not what I would have, that's not where I would have thought the story would take us. But uh, I appreciate that explanation. I'm sure that the other people out there that are trying to uh, get their uh, tactical game uh, in check or uh, stronger, I'm sure they appreciate that. I mean, I just imagine how many people are out there, you know, racking their brain trying to figure out how to get knife number 16 or 17 um, uh, stowed away on them, so to speak. So uh, I I appreciate you sharing that with us. And um, it looks... Like we are about to wrap it up. Uh, Debbie, is there anything else you would like to add to the conversation since uh, you're kind of a uh, a guest here today? Yeah, no, not really. I still try to figure out how you get 15 knives without using your underwear. I think I think if I had, I think if I take the, the tip about the 5 or 15 knife things, I think, oh, I think that, I think what probably happened, yeah... Well, I probably, I can think of like maybe where I could put four knives safely, but I probably not end up carrying any, no. Yeah, so, no, that's all I had, that's all I had to say, yeah. All right, cool. Thank you, Debbie, for joining us. Um, I'm sure we will hear from you again. So, Debbie, thank you for calling in. Uh, Thanks to our producer for uh, letting you just chime in in our, uh, conversation so appreciate that debbie i'm sure we will talk to you later tim is there anything else you would like to say before we uh wrap up this episode uh no guys I, you know i don't want to give a lot away right now so um i've kind of given some previews for what's coming up obviously but yeah i think most of the work i'll be doing now with uh, the fill switch tps representing um is, is apparently going to be through the uh, via the video format so i'm looking forward to that uh yeah, I'm 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 excited about it. Uh I, I think other people might be excited about it. We'll just find out. But yeah, anytime I can come back um and, and give you guys some more tips, more knowledge, uh I'm happy to do that. So I appreciate you guys having me on and I appreciate you guys uh bringing to me bringing me into the uh Phil Switch family. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh yeah, we we uh we're happy to have you, you know, having you, uh, we just heard a little bit from you last week in a phone call. We didn't even know who you were and, uh, having you back in the studio today, you seem like a, a good guy. So, uh, you know, from, from my perspective and obviously Phil has said it and our producer called you, uh, we're happy to have you, uh, yeah, we're happy to have you in the Phil Switch family. So, um, yeah, I don't really have anything to say. This was kind of like a Phil Debbie show. So it's like I said, it was kind of fun for me to watch. So, uh, I, I'm I'm all good for if you uh, want to take us out here. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that was a fun show today. Um, it was very nice to get to talk to Tim a little bit more. Uh, we 
uh, got to talk to Debbie a little bit more. So that was nice as well. Um, and I think that's all for me. So thank you for listening to the Phil Switch podcast. And don't forget to check out my other podcast, the 1st and 15th, which I co-host with Kaplowitz Media. You can find him at kaplowitz.xyz. XYZ is going to take the world by storm. Just wait. Uh, Kaplowitz is a pioneer in that way. So again, you can find him over at kaplowitz.xyz. Um, excellent writer, by the way. Absolutely excellent writer. Um, if you would like to contact us here at the Phil Switch, email us at thephilswitch at gmail.com. Again, that's thephilswitch at gmail.com. We wish you all a great week, and we'll talk to you soon here at the Phil Switch.